Hi there and welcome to the video. My name's Gareth. Today we're going to be looking at how to create text around the shape of a circle or inside a circle. And these techniques can be used to put text on any shape path that you like. So we'll start by clicking new project. And I'm just going to choose the Instagram preset just because it gives us a nice square canvas. And I'll go down to the shape section in the toolbar, change it to ellipse. And what I'm going to do here is go back up to the main toolbar at the top and change it to path and not shape. And this is just because for the demonstration, it will be easier for you to see what's going on if I don't have any kind of stroke or fill um, obscuring things in the shot. But of course, if you want to put it along an actual shape or create the text around a shape that's got colors and stroke outline strokes, that's absolutely fine, of course. So I'll start dragging the shape out here. And because it's an ellipse, um, it's very difficult to get a perfect circle. But if you hold the shift key down, it will restrain um, or constrain, should I say, the shape to a perfect circle. And then we can just let go. And that's our starting point. So what we need to do now is press T to get to our text tool or select it from the toolbar here. And a couple of things to just check first. I'm going to come up to the alignment here. I'm going to click center aligned or center justified just to make sure that when we start typing it around the circle, we can make sure we can get it perfectly in the middle. I'm going to go to the font and I'm going to, I've got a few favorites saved here. Fonts I quite like, so there's Chango. We're going to choose this because it's quite a nice big bold font. So once we've got that chosen, we need to click on the path. And if you click outside of the path here, it will just type in a straight text box, which is not what we want. So I'm going to undo that. And you need to click either on the line itself of the circle or just on the inside. So I'm just going to click on the click on the line here. And as you can see, it's created a cursor, which will now let me type along the shape of the path. So in this case, a circle. Now, before I start doing this, I just want to point out some very important things when you start to do this process. These little dots and symbols around the edge of the circle. So the four square dots in the north, south, east and west position, they just represent the exact vertical and horizontal centers of the circle. But down here, you can see this other sort of icon has appeared. It's like a dot with a little cross through it. Now that's actually two symbols overlapping each other, which affect the position of the text relative to the circle. And I'll, I'll show you exactly what I mean in the moment. So for now, let's just type photo P at the top. So let's just make it bigger. Let's just increase the font size. So we're getting some nice big text. I really like that. Yeah, that looks good to me. So as you can see, it's not quite centered, even though we've got the center aligned checked up here, the icon checked, it's rel still relative to these two little icons down here. So let me just jump in and show you exactly what I mean by this. Once we've got our text size set, we need to be on the path select tool, which is down here in order to move and manipulate the text along the path. So always make sure it's the path select tool and not the direct select because that will start to distort the shape of the circle. So path select tool chosen, selected. We can now go down and as you can see, these Ignore the fact that the text is going a bit crazy. It's disappearing and it's flipping and all that. I just want to explain these two really quickly because it's quite important. So as you can see, when you start dragging these and moving them, they've split into a cross shape and like a round dot. Now the cross shape represents the start of the text and the round dot represents the end of the text. And you can drag them both. And as you can see, if I drag the dot, it's sort of pushing the word photo P that way. And if I drag the X or the cross shape, sorry, it's dragging it the other way. So this means that to get it perfectly aligned in the center, all I need to do is to drag the X to this left hand side square, which we know represents the perfect center of the circle. And then the dot, the round dot to the other one. And because it's on center aligned now, Anything we do to this text, this photo P word here, no matter what we do, we change the font, change the size. It will always remain in the center of that circle, which is quite important. Okay. So another function of these two little, the cross and the dot handles is if you drag them inside the circle, as you can see, it flips the word, puts it on the inside edge instead of the outside edge. 
but it also now reads backwards. So that's just to bear in mind when you're dragging it around, if the word starts flipping around and, and going a bit crazy, it's because depending on whether you drag the mouse, the cursor outside of the circle or inside, it just puts it in those two options, either on the outside of the line reading one way or on the inside of the line and reading the other way. So for this word, we want it on the outside because we want it to be curving around and following the circle. So that's looking good to me, but we want to add a second word to this. So make sure we're on the text tool and we'll do the same thing. We'll come down. We don't need to create another circle. We don't need to do anything else. We can just come down to the bottom and click on the line of the circle. And as you can see here, it's created the cursor for the text. And also at the top on the opposite side, you can see it's now created an additional instance of that little dot on the cross that are currently on top of each other. So let's just start typing our text is awesome. So straight away, you can see the text is going backwards, which of course is not what we want. So let's just say we're happy with that font. We're happy with that font size. It matches that. So we want to change the positioning of it now. So for that, we need to go back to our friend, the path select tool. And once we've clicked on that, we can now start manipulating the little dot on the cross. And as you can see, I've moved the cursor as earlier inside and outside of the line and it's flipping it the other way. So we do that all of a sudden it's reading the right way now. Whereas when we typed in the text, it was like this. So the is awesome is reading backwards, which is no good. So now we, we drag this to the other side of the line and it flips the text the right way, but now it still doesn't look right because it's on the inner edge of the circle and not on the outer edge of the circle. But luckily that's super easy to fix. But before I do that, I'm just going to drag as we did earlier, drag the cross and the little circular dot onto the side side squares of the circle, just to make sure it's exactly aligned in the center. And now we can fix the position of the it's awesome. So with that selected, what we're going to do to fix this is we need to go to the character dialogue here. And if you don't have this CHA on your toolbar here, just go to the window menu and you can just add it here character. Now the two things we're going to need to fix this or use to fix this, we're going to need to use the baseline shift and we're also going to play with the tracking. Now the tracking is just the relative space in between the characters, as you can see there, which we'll need to adjust to get it looking right. But the important one here is the baseline shift because what this does is it moves the text further away or closer relative to the line that you've typed it across or typed it along, should I say. So if I drag this left and right, you can see what it's doing. It's bringing it in or it's pushing it out. And to get it to sit along the outside of the line, we need to take it to a minus figure. But unfortunately, it seems to only go to minus 10 on the slider, which isn't enough. But you can actually just type in a bigger value and it'll accept it. So we can try minus 50. Okay. So now it's pushing that out but it's not quite far enough. So let's try minus 70. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So now we've got both of the lines of text. We've got the photo P and the is awesome on individual layers. So we can turn them on and off. They each have their own circular path built into the layer itself. So you don't need to worry about that going missing. And you can adjust them both completely independently, of course. So now we can adjust the tracking in to bring the it's awesome, is awesome characters close together. And sometimes when you manipulate text around curves and shapes, you'll notice that some of the gaps in between the letters aren't even. So I'm noticing there's quite a big gap between the A and the W in the word awesome compared to the rest of the letters. And that's um, basically the kerning and we can adjust this manually. It's very easy. Just make sure you're on your text tool. And all you do is highlight the first character out of the two that features the gap. So we want to change the gap between the A and the W. So I'll highlight the A and we just go back to that tracking control like we used earlier. But because we've just highlighted that one character, now if you look what happens, it's only adjusting the gap between those two characters and not every character in the line of text. 
So now we can bring that down and just make the gap a little bit smaller. It just looks a bit more pleasing to the eye. And sometimes if you type something out, you're making a logo or a design and you like the font, you like the design, but there's something that just doesn't look quite right. A lot of the time it's the spacing, it's the kerning in between some of the characters are too big or too small and it makes it look a little bit unbalanced. So maybe we can go up here and do the same on the photo P. Maybe there's a bit too much of a gap between the O and the T here. So again, we can do exactly the same thing. Just select that and we can just tweak them maybe between that T and that O. You don't always have to go to this level of detail, but when you put text around shapes, it really does introduce a few of these little issues that you just, it just pays to go in and just do a little bit of tweaking afterwards to make sure everything looks nice and neat as possible. Thank you.